Great, thank you so much. Um, so this this paper um, is going to appear this year in stock, and it's joint work with Nina Balkan, Dan de Blasio, Travis Dick, Carl Kingsford, and Thomas Santom. And it was really a collaboration between us in the computer science department at CMU, together with the comp bio department and the machine learning department. So as we've seen uh, several times in this workshop, algorithms often come with a ton of tunable parameters. And these parameters can have a significant impact on the algorithm's runtime, its solution quality, and so on. And tuning these parameters by hand is just a notoriously time-consuming, tedious, and error-prone process. So our goal in data-driven algorithm design is to automate the process of algorithm configuration or parameter tuning with the help of machine learning. So we want to be able to algorithmically find good parameter settings using a set of typical problem instances from the particular application domain at hand. And you can think of this set of typical problem instances as the training set. Whatever parameter setting we come up with, it should ideally also have good performance, not only on our training set, but also on future inputs from the same application, but which aren't already in our training set. So I'm going to use the following combinatorial problem as a running example throughout this talk, which is sequence alignment. And sequence alignment, of course, has many applications throughout biology, NLP, and other fields. So the input to a sequence alignment algorithm is a pair of sequences, like these two, S and S prime. And the output is an alignment of these sequences. And our, there are a bunch of different features of an alignment that we might care about, such as the number of matches, the number of mismatches, the number of insertions or deletions, or indels for short, and this is where I've matched a character up with one of these gap characters, and the number of affine gaps, which is these sequences of consecutive gap characters. So here is a standard dynamic programming algorithm for this combinatorial problem, which is defined by these three tunable parameters, row one, row two, and row three. So we use dynamic programming to find an alignment which maximizes this parameterized objective function, which is the number of matches minus row one times the number of mismatches minus row two times the number of indels minus row three times the number of gaps. So in sequence alignment, we can sometimes access some ground truth reference alignment. So this is true, for example, in computational biology applications sometimes. However, accessing this ground truth alignment requires extensive manual alignments by some domain expert. So we'd rather just run that parameterized dynamic programming algorithm from the previous slide. But this raises the question, how should we tune that algorithm's parameters? And as Gus Field et al. wrote, there's considerable disagreement among molecular biologists about the correct choice of these tunable parameters. And finding a well-tuned parameter setting um, can make a big difference on the quality of the resulting alignment. So here's a ground truth alignment of a pair of protein sequences. And here's an alignment returned by an algorithm with poorly tuned parameters. So the blue regions here indicate where the algorithm's output matches up with the ground truth, al ground truth alignment. Meanwhile, here's an alignment returned by an algorithm with well-tuned parameters. So you can see that this algorithm is able to recover much more of the alignment than the algorithm with the poorly tuned parameters. So how might we hope to tune these algorithms parameters using machine learning? Well, first we would fix some parameters algorithm like the sequence alignment algorithm from the previous slide. Then we'd receive a training set of typical problem instances from a particular application domain. So in the sequence alignment example, each problem instance in our training set is a pair of sequences together with its ground truth alignment. Then we'd run some optimizations and we'd find a parameter setting which has good average empirical performance over this training set. 
And in general, good average performance can mean good runtime, good solution quality, good memory usage, and so on. In this sequence alignment example, it would mean that the algorithm's output alignment is close to that ground truth reference alignment on average over the training set. So the key question we wanna answer in this talk is the following. Will that parameter setting also have good future performance on problems from the same application domain, but which aren't already in our training set? So for example, on a new sequence pair, where we don't even know what the ground truth alignment is, can we somehow guarantee that the algorithm's output alignment will be close to that ground truth alignment? And this model applies in many other settings beyond sequence alignment. So for example, people have looked at this type of model in the context of constraint satisfaction programming, clustering, integer and linear programming, and problems from computational biology, among many other fields. And just to give a little bit of history, this type of data-driven algorithm design or automated algorithm configuration has been studied pretty extensively over the past couple of decades, mostly from an applied perspective. There's surprisingly little known from a theoretical perspective on this topic. But this started to change about five years ago, and we've seen a surge of interest in this topic from a theoretical perspective as well. This is due in part to a 2016 paper by Gupta and Roughgarden where they introduced this very natural learning theoretic model of algorithm configuration, which we're gonna adopt in this talk. So to give an overview of this talk's main results, let's remember that key question I mentioned. We wanna know, if we find a configuration of our algorithm with good average performance over our training set, does this imply it will also have good future performance? So we answer this question for any parameterized algorithm where at a high level, its performance is a piecewise structured function of its parameters. And by piecewise structured, I mean, for example, it's piecewise constant, piecewise linear, piecewise quadratic, and so on. So to illustrate this, you could imagine that we're varying some tunable parameters, row one and row two, and we're plotting in the algorithm's performance, so its runtime or its solution quality, as a function of these parameters on some fixed input. So for example, some fixed sequence pair. We can split the parameter space into regions where this function is constant. So it's a piecewise constant function. But it could also be a piecewise linear function, or piecewise something else. So in the example of sequence alignment, as we'll see in the next few slides, we can prove that the, out, the distance between the algorithm's output alignment given a pair of sequences and this ground truth alignment is always gonna be a piecewise constant function. And we all see this structure in a bunch of other combinatorial domains as well, including integer programming algorithm configuration, clustering algorithm configuration, greedy algorithm configuration, and computational biology algorithm configuration. And let me highlight one of the key challenges in providing provable guarantees in these combinatorial domains, which is that these algorithms performance is just a notoriously volatile function of its parameters. So you could imagine we're tuning some parameter here row along the horizontal axis, and we're measuring the algorithm's performance, so its runtime or its solution quality as a function of the parameters. And it's a really volatile function. And intuitively, this is because in these combinatorial domains, if you just tweak the algorithm's parameters by a little bit, you can cause a cascade of changes in the algorithm's behavior, and therefore these jump discontinuities in its performance. So overall, there's just a really complex connection between the algorithm's parameters and its performance on any given input. And this is kind of unlike those functions we really understand well from a theoretical perspective in machine learning where there's typically a fairly straightforward connection between a function's parameters and its value on any given input. 
And since we don't really have this predictable structure in these algorithm configuration problems, we have to understand what structure is there which will allow us to provide, provide pro provable guarantees. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you a bit more formally about our model and the pr problem formulation. So in our model, RD is the set of all parameter settings and X is the set of all inputs to our algorithm. So in this sequence alignment example, we had three tunable parameters. So the set of all parameter settings is R3 and X would be a set of sequence pairs. So one element of the set X is a pair of sequences. A little more formally, what do I mean by algorithmic performance? Well, I'm gonna use the notation U row of X to denote the utility of the algorithm parameterized by row on the input X. So again, this could be the algorithm's runtime, its solution quality, the distance to some ground truth solution, and so on. So I'll use the terms algorithmic performance and utility somewhat interchangeably. And for notational simplicity, we're gonna assume that this quantity is bounded between negative one and one, but this can easily be generalized to any bounded interval. So to model the application domain, we're gonna make this standard assumption that's been made for decades in this algorithm configuration literature, which is that there's some unknown application specific distribution over the algorithm's inputs. And this distribution is meant to model the specific application domain at hand. So in the sequence alignment example, for ex it could be a distribution over the pairs of DNA strands a biolab has to align day after day. Or it could be a distribution over pairs of protein sequences. So now with this notation, let me formalize the question that I mentioned earlier on. The key question we wanna answer is, for any choice of the algorithm's parameters, is that algorithm's average utility over the training set close to its expected utility on this unknown application-specific distribution? So written mathematically, we wanna know, given a training set, X1 up through Xn of problem instances sampled from this application-specific distribution, we want to know for any choice of our parameter setting, what's the difference between that parameter setting's average empirical utility over the training set and its expected utility on this unknown application specific distribution? And if this difference is indeed small for any choice of our parameter setting, we can be certain that if we find a parameter setting with good average empirical utility over the training set using your favorite black box optimization algorithm, parameter optimization algorithm, we can also be certain that it will also have strong expected utility on our distribution. And you could think of expected utility as basically being a proxy for future utility on future problem instances from the same application domain. Okay, so I told you that our guarantees hold whenever the algorithm's performance is a piecewise structured function of its parameters. So let me give you an example of this. And let's re remember the sequence alignment algorithm I mentioned earlier on. It's defined by these three tunable parameters and it returns this alignment which maximizes this parameterized objective function. So back over two decades ago, Gus Field et al. proved a really helpful lemma. Uh, it turns out to be useful in this setting too, which says the following. For any pair of sequences, S and S prime, like these two, Gus Field et al. proved that there's a small partition of the parameter space. So here I'm just, for, for the picture, I'm just showing two tunable parameters, but there are three tunable parameters. So there's a small partition of this parameter space so that within any one region, the alignment that the algorithm outputs is fixed across any parameter setting in that region. So what I'm saying is that, for example, in this blue region, no matter what parameter setting we use, the algorithm always outputs this alignment, for example. 
And if we shift to another region, it will always output some other alignment, no matter what parameter setting we use. An immediate corollary of this lemma is that the algorithm's utility or the distance between the algorithm's output and the ground truth alignment of these sequences is a piecewise constant function of these tunable parameters using the exact same partition of the parameter space as in the previous slide. Okay, so let me tell you now about this piecewise structure a little bit more formally. So let's remember that notation I introduced earlier in this talk, u rho of x, the utility of the algorithm parameterized by rho on the input x. So if I collect the set of all such functions u rho, I'll call it u, and I'll refer to it as the primal function class. And typically in learning theory, we prove these types of generalization guarantees by bounding the intrinsic complexity of this primal function class U. And we use notions that you might have heard of before, like VC dimension, pseudo dimension, Radovacher complexity, and so on. But the real challenge in these combinatorial domains is that this function class U is really gnarly. So for example, in sequence alignment, every element in the domain of this functions is a pair of sequences. So it's unclear how to plot or even visualize these utility functions. And there's certainly no obvious notions of Lipschitz continuity or smoothness that we could rely on to bound the intrinsic complexity of this function class. This is where the notion of a dual function comes in handy. So instead of fixing the parameter rho and varying the input x, we could just as well fix the input x and vary the parameter rho. And we'd get utility as a function of these tunable parameters. And as you would hope, ux of rho equals u rho of x. And if I collect the set of all such functions ux, I'll call it the dual function class. And I'll refer to it as u star. And these dual functions are really nice because they have this simple Euclidean domain, RD. And it turns out that they have ample structure we can use to bound the intrinsic complexity of the class that we actually care about, the primal function class. And kind of what I've been alluding to so far in this talk is that we've seen that across many different domains, clustering algorithm configuration, integer programming, computational biology, mechanism configuration from economics and greedy algorithm configuration. These dual functions, the algorithm's performance as a function of its parameters is a piecewise structured function. Okay, with this notion of piecewise structure, let me now tell you about our main theorem. And I'll warm up with the case where there's just a single tunable parameter. And for any input x, this dual function, the algorithm's utility as a function of this parameter is a piecewise constant function with at most k pieces. So in this picture, k would be four. So we prove that a training set of size log k over epsilon squared implies that with high probability for any choice of this parameter setting, the algorithm's average utility of the training set is gonna be epsilon close to its expected utility. And I've just written that mathematically here. And it, basically what this is saying is that so long as you really only have a few samples, you can guarantee that the algorithm's average utility of the training set will be indicative of its future utility on problems from the same application, but which aren't already in the training set. Okay, so what if this function is not piecewise constant? What if it's piecewise linear or piecewise something else? And what if there are multiple tunable parameters? Well, to tell you about our result in full generality, let me tell you about um, this notion of intrinsic complexity in a, a little bit more. So the intrinsic complexity, which I'll denote CG, of some function class G. 
These notions of intrinsic complexity from learning theory basically measure how well are functions in this class able to fit complex patterns of noise. So for example, um, these sine functions on the left would be able to fit more complex patterns of noise than these constant functions on the right. And we have many specific ways of measuring intrinsic complexity in learning theory, such as VC dimension and pseudo dimension. Okay, so with this kind of high level idea in mind, let me tell you the flavor of our main results. So let's imagine that we're, I'm gonna start off with a picture. So let's imagine that we have these two tunable parameters, row one and row two. In general, there could be any number of tunable parameters, but for the picture, let's just say there are two. And we're plotting this dual function, the algorithm's performance as a function of its parameters. And let's say that there are these functions f, from some class f, which partition the parameter space into regions. So in this case, there are three such functions, such that within any one region of this partition, the algorithm's performance equals some function g from some set g. So in this picture, g would be the set of all constant functions, but it could be any set of functions. Okay, so in words, let's say there are these boundary functions, f1 up through fk, which partition the parameter space into regions so that within any one region, the algorithm's performance equals some function g from some set g. So we prove that if you have a training set of size one over epsilon squared, times the intrinsic complexity of the set of boundary functions plus the intrinsic complexity of the set of piece functions times log k, where k is the number of boundary functions. So a training set of this size will imply that with high probability for any choice of your parameter setting, average utility over the training set will be epsilon close to expected utility or future utility. And typically these boundary and piece functions are so well structured that it's actually pretty simple to derive the intrinsic complexity of these function classes. So for example, if G is the set of all constant functions, then its intrinsic complexity is a constant. If G is the set of all linear functions in RD, its intrinsic complexity is D. And for those of you who are familiar with learning theory, specifically what we prove is that the pseudo dimension of the class of primal functions is bounded by a, whoops, um, the VC dimension of the dual of the set of boundary functions plus the pseudo dimension of the dual of the set of piece functions times log K, where K is the number of boundary functions. And I think it's really interesting from a learning theoretic perspective why we see the dual show up in so many places. So I'm, I'm happy to talk about that more afterwards. And so now let me give you an application of our main theorem to sequence alignment. So re let's remember that lemma I mentioned um, earlier on the, in the talk, which is that this algorithm's utility is a piecewise constant function of its parameters, the distance between the ground truth alignment and that alignment the algorithm outputs. So just plugging in what we know about this function into the main theorem from the previous slide, we can show that if you have a training set of size log the maximum length of these sequences divided by epsilon squared, you'll get that with high probability for any choice of this parameter setting, average utility over the training set will be epsilon close to expected or future utility. Okay, so now I'm just gonna wrap up with some conclusions. So in this talk, I described a unifying structure, this piecewise structure, which connects these seemingly disparate problems from combinatorial algorithm configuration, clustering algorithm configuration, integer programming, computational biology, mechanism configuration from economics, and greedy algorithm configuration. And we saw that we can use this structure to provide extremely general guarantees for using machine learning to tune these algorithms parameters. So with that, I'll wrap up and thank you and I'll take any questions.